Welcome to part 17 for our Galaxy Defiance component-based tutorial series in Godot 4. In this video, we're going to be creating a difficulty system, which will essentially just increase the difficulty of the game and uh, use the score as a basis for that. So let's, well, let's open up the enemy generator if you haven't already. And inside of our enemy generator, we're going to make some changes to the code to account for difficulty. So essentially our difficulty system is going to uh, get access to the game stats and it's going to use the score to increase the difficulty. So whatever the score value is, it will use that to grab the difficulty. So let's export our game stats here. Like this. Then our enemy generator, we'll get that export here. We can look for game stats. We can drag over gamestats.tres and drop it in here. Now that we've got access to the game stats, we're going to come down into our ready function. We're going to use the score of our game stats. Um, so first, actually, we need to we need to change our handle spawn uh, function here a little bit. And the reason is because we want to have a time offset value, uh, which essentially is going to affect how much the difficulty increases over time. So we're going to pass in a new argument here called time offset. And we're going to give it a default value so that we don't have to pass anything into it. Okay, so now our spawner component is spawning an enemy here. Now we need to uh, start the timer, but instead of just starting the timer at the same time, we're going to create a spawn rate. So var spawn rate. We're going to set this equal to time offset. Oops. Offset divided by... 0.5, this is just hard coded in here because I found that it was useful to cut this in half. And then we're gonna have game stats dot score times 0.01. Again, another hard coded value here. Um, so let's talk about this function real quick. Okay, so I've opened up desmos.com, which is a website for graphing uh, functions and you can see here's our spawn rate. Let's see. Here's our function spawn rate equals time offset Yeah, we already typed it all out. So I'm not going to say it again, but I have now um, passed that function into um, Desmos here now we can't use actual variable names. You have to just use letters for the variables So imagine that y is spawn rate and x is our game stats dot score, right? And then O up here is our time offset. Okay, and this is the cal calculation, this is the graph that comes out of this function. Okay, so what this does, if you look, let's say our score is five, right? So if our score is five, that means X is equal to five, right? And our spawn rate, which is going to be what we set the timer to, is going to be equal to uh, this value right here. So it's going to be um, 1.8. So almost every two seconds, right? With, so an enemy, when we have our time offset set to one, an, that enemy will spawn about, and our score is five, that enemy will spawn about every 1.8 seconds. Now, let's say our score is equal to 100. That enemy is going to spawn about every 0.66 seconds. Okay, so you can see that the spawn rate is getting faster as the score increases. Now, the basis for this right here, so see how we, how we um, added this 0 0.5 here. That is um, 
that right there actually moves, like let's change this to 5.5. That moves the graph. You can see it moved it over this way. So I set it back to 0 0.5. It's gonna move it back over here near the origin. Now I moved the graph back some because I didn't want this very steep high value over here at the start. I didn't want it to take forever for an enemy to spawn in at the very start. So that's why I've moved the graph over here. But the basis of this graph here is a y equals one over x. This curve here, this is a y equals one over x. And it's a really useful graph for, for um, timers because we want them we don't want them to ever reach zero, but we want them to approach zero. We want them to get closer and closer to zero as the score increases, and that's what, that's what happens here. Okay, so this is the function we're using. Now, our offset here that I gave you, um, this offset moves the curve kind of up and down. See that? So that's our time offset. So if we want to make an enemy that starts off spawning very slowly, because right, our, the default is one, but say we want to make an enemy that starts off spawning really slowly, we could set it to five or even 10. And then that enemy is at, at a score of five, it's gonna take um, 18 seconds for it to spawn in. So it's gonna take forever for it to spawn in and it's going to uh, affect the graph some. Now, this is just how I set it up. There are other ways that you can manipulate this same y equals 1 over x in order to get values that you like. But this is how I set it up, and I wanted to show you inside of a graphing calculator so you could understand what this function does, how this function works. And it can be useful sometimes to use graphing calculators for stuff like that. Okay, so now we're going to pass in timer.start spawn rate plus rand f range and we'll do 0 0.25 and 0 0.5 so we're going to use our spawn rate but there we're going to add a little bit of variance to it um, just so it's not the same every time okay so now uh, when we bind our arguments to our handle spawn we can pass in an optional third argument to uh, determine how frequently that enemy spawns right it's our time offset which affects how soon it spawns especially early on so for our yellow enemy we're going to pass in a value of 5.0 and for our pink enemy we'll pass in a value of 10. okay now let's run and you can see that uh our green enemy does start spawning pretty quickly. Here comes a yellow enemy. And a pink enemy. As our score increases, the enemies start to increase faster. You can already see that the green enemy is coming quite fast. And it's already starting to get a lot crazier. Stuff is spawning in much more quickly. And this is how we can increase the difficulty. Pink enemies are hard because they're hard to kill. So even though they don't spawn in quite as fast, they tend to last a lot longer. So get a lot of them on screen. The yellow enemies too are kind of stacking up here. And our score, it's things are getting really tough now. Okay, so you can see that this is clearly working. It's getting more difficult over time. Now, the last thing I want to do here in this video is actually set up. Uh, I want to only enable uh, the yellow and pink enemies after a score of a certain value. So what we'll do is we'll click on the yellow enemy spawn timer here and we'll come into process and we'll set it to disabled now you can see that the node goes gray here and i'm going to come into the pink enemy spawn timer and i'm going to do the same thing 
So we're disabling their process mode. Now we'll just make it so they don't work at all. Those two timers won't even fire. So if we run the game, we're never actually going to have yellow or pink enemies. It will just be green enemies the entire time. Okay. And, uh, But we want to allow them to create some enemies. So let's come into our game stats. Oh, we already have score changed. Perfect. Um, so we're just going to come into the ready function on our generator. And we're going to connect to game stats dot score changed. And we'll connect it to our dot connect. We'll connect it to an anonymous function. And this function is just going to have... Uh, it's going to need our new score. Let's pass into it because score changed uh, passes out new score. See? Okay. And um, Godot is mad at us. Expected indent block after lambda declaration. Uh, I think it's just because we don't have any code in here. Yeah, okay. So we're going to put if new score is greater than 10, yellow enemy spawn timer dot process mode equals node dot process mode inherit. And we want to switch it back to inherit, which is the default, okay? And we're going to do another if statement here. If new score is greater than 50 pink enemy spawn timer dot process mode equals node dot process mode inherit that will just enable them so we'll connect a function that checks the new score and then enables those timers if the new score is greater than a certain value so now we won't have any enemies uh, until We'll have only green enemies at the start. Like even if I, well, I already, I already killed too many. So we should start getting yellow enemies now. Yep, there's a yellow enemy. But we won't see any pink enemies yet because our score is too low, right? Um, but if I were to start killing these to get our score above 50, let's do that here. Now we're going to start seeing pink enemies. It's going to take a second because of how long the timer takes to go off. But there it is. Okay? And you can mess with these values if you want to. This 10 and 50. Um, you could change those values to set up the game however you like. But there we've got our increasing difficulty. That's going to be it for this lecture. I hope you learned something and enjoyed it. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you want to support my content here on YouTube, you can purchase my Godot courses. There's a link in the description for those. And I will see you all in the next video.